So hello and welcome to the 12th episode of Nightmare Down Under, where we play the game Gear City on Nightmare Difficulty Down Under in Australia. We started in 1900, now it is January 1928. So in the last episode we did a quick facelift so without changing too many things, except the gearbox, uh, of our full-size sedan, which is now the Australis 18, it was the 16 before, so we found like 2 horsepower in our bigger engine, which isn't that big. So, we don't have any ongoing research, so we should put something on. And that's, I think, finally putting out uh, our uh, Australis 7 Phaeton out to pasture, because it's the only one still using the platform we designed in 1912, so the medium-sized platform, and also the only one still using the two-cylinder engine uh, that we also designed in 1912, and it has served us extremely well. So if we look, um, then we, it has made 18.7 mil million in profits. If we look at the last annual results and sort by income, we see it's in uh, second place, although we have to add the two tourings together. So then it is in third. And if we add both sedans together, then it's in actually in fourth. So it's not that important anymore, but it has been in the past. If we look into body type demand, uh, then it's uh, now uh, well below the full size sedan, although we are still selling uh, plenty of them, but not that many actually. So uh, sales have dropped from 2250 here to 1662. Although this has this something to do with competition? I have lost track of what our competitors offer and where. Um, hang on, Phaeton. So there is the Burned All, but that's pretty new in Adelaide. Otherwise, both uh, Apeson and Hopesy have pulled their Phaeton, so this is actually just genuinely mon uh, sort of monopoly uh, sales. But I think it's still worth developing a new one. Only once, uh, since we don't have much competition at the moment, this might change. And this one goes then on the new, on the, on the established long wheelbase platform, which still has uh, something like uh, eight years or so left in it, so one good generation. We put in the 16 horsepower engine, the smaller one, because it's cheaper and also more economical. We might check whether actually the larger engine gives better fuel economy due to this uh, awkward um, hurdle in the, in the game of uh, the uh, penalty um, that the game gives sometimes uh, when the power isn't enough. And it's going to get uh, the uh, non-synchronous 3-speed. So here we have, and we have to change the body just to make sure. So this is all that's left in terms of uh, Phaeton bodies. And to say what's different, because we're using this, I think, for the Touring, what I'm saying is the one with the roof is the Touring and the one without is the Phaeton. So we have two choices, which basically look the same. It's rather modern, so that's then maybe our leap into the next uh, um, sort of decade. So this has 11.3 and this has 11.2 fuel consumption, 690 cargo and 697. So this has the better arrow, so the Adams. Let's just check with the slightly bigger engine whether this makes a difference in terms of fuel consumption. So it's a new vehicle actually, it's a new, it's a new platform, so not, not an update, but this doesn't really matter for these calculations. And it's the three-speed non-synchronous Adam's body. 10.2. It actually has less fuel consumption. It's faster. Okay, so then this is maybe the selling point. It's a speed demon, so to speak. And the price doesn't really make some difference. It's ten. It's ten dollars. So actually, this one with a nominally lower fuel economy or worse fuel economy 
is better since it has much more torque. Okay, so that's our new Phaeton. What does the other body give? Does this make a difference? 10.3 and this was 10.2, so not really. I'm not a fan of these of these wheels, but that's just personal preference. So I like these wheels better. And it doesn't really matter that much. 0.2 fuel economy is not going to change anything. So we are selling so material costs of actually pretty high for a Phaeton. But we still have to Yeah, keep things simple. So it's for male and it's middle class maybe. So things have slightly shifted in importance, but not that much. So I still want safety and dependability, so we're going, probably going to increase um, sliders here again. Market demographic doesn't change stuff. So they want reliability, so 30, 30 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. And 383 material cost, I think, is pretty neat. I like some more cargo space. 41. They like some of handling. 42. And they love safety, I suppose. 43. Some extra quality. Mm, 410. 399. I think 399 is nice. Yeah, material requirements, I'm at the limit. Okay. 400, how much the old one cost? 283, so it's more expensive, but it's much better. And this one will last actually pretty long and it actually has very high ratings. I think partially this is because uh, it has pretty good components. I think, and I think also our Im uh, improved skills of designing cars now in, terms, in game terms now also play a role. Yep, so this can all fuel economy, doesn't do anything. Comfortability, same. We're simply having a pretty good Phaeton that we will sell through price, but not exclusively through price. All right, 396. So stats are pretty good. A top speed 80 and fuel consumption 10.3. So it's actually the 18 Phaeton. It fits, nice. 12 months. 11 months is 872, 12 months is 600, so 300,000 for a month. It's probably not that urgent. And then we can design a new platform. Yep, so let's keep it on, on 12 months, that's, that's good. The 18 Phaeton on a pretty modern body. So that's in the works. Let's see how the overhauled full-size sedan sells. Cash position is excellent, so we have three million cash flow. No missed sales. I think that's that's good. So here we are s selling of reserves. The 15 sedan. So an 800 standard sedan. So we have competition, but that they're not doing much to us. Touring sales are pretty pretty great. That's the 15 touring. We need a couple more. Eighteen sedan. Is good, so good good estimation, so we can cut it back to nine hundred. Rest is good. 
So yearly sales, nice, but I think it's uh, still uh, way below the big companies. There is now a, the, the, a new frame called the parameter frame. We have to check that out once we build our new uh, platform. So some new car bodies. Few missed, a few missed sales again. Fifth, the both sedans. Did someone again exit the market? Yeah, parental frame, I know. Phaeton is good. 17 touring, actually, yeah, I can make less. So 917 touring. Mm, 1,700 grand coupes. One extra production line. I'm running into trouble here. Because the sedans. When is Sydney? Six months, okay. So 1,700. 1,800, then we have some reserves. So tons of sedans. What I can do while I see this, I can recondition again, and then I'm getting a little bit more production capacity, which may not really make a difference, but anyway. So it doesn't hurt to do reconditioning. And we're going to sell then more stuff anyway. So the 15 sedan, we're selling 1,200. The LX, 950. And we need one more line here. For the LX. Probably won't need that many. And have to adjust all others for the, the adjusted production. So sedans, did someone... I'm not sure why everyone is exiting the market. If that's indeed the problem. Yeah, they, there's only now one um, of a Hope C sedan, so they think they cancelled their, their, their old one. Only the better one is now on sale. And of course, us having two um, helps ever so slightly. What's Apeson doing? And the other. So we have three overseas companies in three different cities, and only in those cities. Apeson has just stuff we don't have, except for the 2 plus 2. Burnt all. They have some stuff we have. Phaeton Touring Sedan. But they are only in Adelaide. And we have Jameson Farewell. We have Sedan that we have also have, and they're also only in Perth. So if there were the other cities, we would have some decent competition, but as it is stands now, there isn't much effective competition except from Hopesy, who are also starting to withdraw things from the market. Wow. 2,000 Phaetons. Uh, is this another market exit? Are we defending on such a level? Phaeton. Hang on, Phaeton. Yeah, there's only the burned all and that's it. We can probably make ours more expensive. So let's go with... Uh, do we run into price gouging? No. But yeah, we're selling it to everyone and the dog. So that's an Australia's Model T, so to speak. They make it a bit more expensive. Rating is still okay, but I would, uh, I'd suspect we probably get uh, some... Um, 2000? Some competition soon. 
something like this. Pickup truck, whoa, that's an insane increase. 1,100. Good thing I started the factory redesign. I didn't expect that our competitions would, com competitors would basically fold. Okay, we can actually make more sedan LX. We need the f 1,615 touring. Okay, Melbourne is at its, at its limit. 17 touring has some reserves, but not for long. So I think we have to increase prices. Grand Coupe also more. So 15 touring 1.8. No, 15 touring 1.5 was fine. We needed the extra production line. 18 sedan also more. Cash flow 5 million or almost. That's pretty insane. I'm not sure why. Yeah, here can't do can't do more. So prices need to go up. Basically of everything. I think the sedans are fine. So I'll get our other factory in five. So we're slowly building some reserves, except where we can't. Two plus two coupe in now with insane sales. So we can cut back a few. So the increasing price has helped a little bit. Seven fate on one eight. If we're not enough. Pickup truck 900. Okay, one production line, that's good. 15 touring. So the sedans are fine. 15 touring. Seventeen touring one one. Eighteen sedan is good, and one more for the Grand Coupe. And I suspect this is on maximum. Yes, it is. Guess is yeah. Well, I think I know what this is. This is the reconditioned branches. So we're selling again more stuff. And our competitors don't know what to do. So, so the market is too small, and we're dominating through dealerships and marketing and whatnot. No contact requests. Melbourne Rental Service. Let's check before I forget. Luxury sedan, which we don't have. So, luxury rental. Okay. So, Phaeton, I can probably drop one now. One, one seven, at least I can eat through a couple of reserves. Pickup is fine. Sedans are fine. Touring are fine. Yeah, so I can add one more to the Grand Coupe. And I can... So, did we, did they also exit the market? Um... There is the Apes and Dudley in Sydney, and it's actually pretty good. And everyone else exited the market, yes. It's okay, so... Price increase. New factory or revamp factory in three. I increase the price and they sell more. Phaeton sales also up. More 17 touring. It's limit. Grand Coupe gets much more expensive. New factory in two. Price 
5.4 million cash flow. We're basically selling er everything we can make touring. During sales jumped. That's that's probably an economic boom in the works. But now, okay, now I can't do. Next week, uh, next month, we're going to get our new. Um, or revamp factory. I hope this will alleviate some things. Are we anywhere not at the maximum now? Everything is. What are unit costs? 118 and 136 with 100% of everything. This is this is funny. In Melbourne, a much more modern factory, we're using 3,200 employees to produce 7,400 cars. And in Sydney, we're producing about half the number of cars with uh, a third less employees. So that's a big difference. So new Sydney redesign, I'm giving up. Four point five million in taxes. So Sydney, let's see what the effect is of a I think pre war factory. Three hundred more, so that helps at least a little bit. So one nine two five. So we need two, three, so 400 Grand Coupés. I'll leave it at that so that they can build some, build up some reserves. Okay, 17 Touring dropped, so I suspect that's price maybe? Or did we get company on the Touring market? Hope he saw. Yep, yeah, that's new. And that's actually pretty impressive. So... And they are on the market everywhere. So then let's react to that. So the 15... One, two, one, three is the lowest. And here... I'll leave, I think I'll leave it at that. So if we go to Sydney, let's, let's put this one beyond b below. Uh, no, it stay. It can stay above because we have the better better marketing. So less tourings. That's I think helpful. Yeah. So we can make um, for the fifteen. We can make. 900 and slowly reduce our inventory. I'm making four lines and then I'm gonna have, going to have to increase that anyway. Okay. That's why you don't want to have monopolies. It's just terrible. Until here, they, they don't steal that much from our 17. So that's going to be 750. Okay, we have three production lines in Melbourne and we can work with that. Phaeton 2200. More pickup trucks. 1100. So sedans are great. 15 the touring were adjusted. Sedan, 18 sedan is great and Grand Coupe is then something I have to work with. So we can simply adjust then here. So 15 sedan is... This is so numbers are great. 15 sedan LX. 1169. Hmm. Why do I have less? This has one. That's that's a bit odd. Okay, one less for the Grand Coupe. One more for the Sedan LX. Essentially. 
Um, so Melbourne is being redesigned, so... I think what I'm st still doing is expand Sydney. Yeah. Although I'm getting mm, new Melbourne in six. It's eight million six more lines. Yeah. Doesn't hurt, so let's see what the unit costs look like now. Almost no missed sales, yay. 111 cost per unit in Sydney, so that's awesome. And probably a couple of furloughed employees. Yeah. Do we have actually stats about employees? Not really in terms of history of employees. And I have auto hiring on, because that's a bit of a pain to do manually. Okay, so Phaeton 2100. Pick up shall, they all shall build reserves. So 15 sedan is fine. LX11. One, one. Ah, that's why. Here is one extra production line for the sedan, which I don't need. But I need it for the Grand Coupe. Okay, 17 Touring, 900, 800, that works too, 15 Touring, 1139, what happens to Touring sales? So hopes he saw sales, yeah, but it sort of loses out, ours is worse, more expensive, but sells more and we have two trims and they only have one okay so the boom or the real boom now seems to be over so say the sl slowing slightly but that's just a relief to be honest so 2000 phaetons 1100 pickup trucks The dance are great. Drawings are great. 18 sedan. Grand Coupe. Yeah, can... Just build some reserves. And this will, always, will change anyway once... Uh, some of our competitors either expand to new cities or bring some mainstream stuff online. I'm simply interpreting this as we're actually defending the market and it's going to be too small for them to uh, sustain things uh, even with a factory here on our soil. So more 15 sedans, 1-4. Rest is good. New contract requests. So we have the best full size and the best pickup. Not the best sedan. Some more competition, but not here. I think I know who has the best sedan. It's the Burnt All in Adelaide. Yes. But they are only in Adelaide. So, yeah, can't help them. And probably not that many dealerships, etc. So this Yeah, all stable and some reserves in case things happen. Okay. Phaeton is finished, so we should have the sun setting, I sort of forgot that. But we have actually plenty of reserves anyway, so it's no big deal. So this sells. So there's something like two thousand plus. 
or otherwise everything that we can. So stop this production and start this production. Yeah, so 2,200. It has to be more expensive. No, it doesn't have to be, but it's much better. Does it have any competition anywhere? The burnt oil. So, so we're not selling to everyone, but to mostly, mostly everyone. Okay. So I think now is the time to start thinking about, yeah, 1924, 1929. So we need to develop a new platform. I'm still reasonably happy with our full-size platform. We still have the best full-size sedan in the country. So is there anything where we could do something with a short wheelbase? What's the competition looking like? And yeah, I don't have no idea where to look actually. So there is no compact car from anyone. The coupe market is pretty crowded. Landed lane limousine. There is no micro car either. There is no minivan, although the, the minivan probably isn't on the short wheelbase. There is no Roadster 2 plus 2. Okay, so that's that. So Roadster, micro car and compact. There is no compact car by Burnt All either. There is no Roadster 2 plus 2. And there is no micro car, so we can simply fill a hole in the market. And the other one was Perth. There is no compact car by Jameson Farewell. There is no micro car, and there is no Roadster 2 plus 2. So that's so then we can fill a hole in the market. How much is this stuff in demand? Not much. So it's all down here. Roadster 2 plus 2, compact car and micro car. So let's aim for a compact car or a Roadster 2 plus 2. What are they like? So compact, small family car, smallest category of sedans, starter drivers and young family demographics. So they want fuel and dependability. There is the fastback. Now that probably looks looks already larger. There's the micro cow. It's basically fuel economy and dependability, so pretty similar to compact cars. Compact cars like safety. Micro, no one likes micro cars. And Roadster 2 plus 2. Four, so two seater. So, so this could be something that they like performance and handling. But there were roadsters. So the roadster 2 plus 2, I'm not sure whether they fit on a small wheelbase. We have probably have to take a look, simply how, what the bodies look like. So, standard roadster. There's a Hope C, which is pretty good. And I'm looking at all of them because they might simply decide to expand to the next cities. Jameson Farewell has also one. So it's going to be a crowded market anyway, and Adelaide. Burnt Oil doesn't have one. This of course is subject to change. So what does the 2 plus 2 look like? So we're not going to build one, we're going to simply take a look at the bodies. I'm not entering the roads the segment because that's probably not going to be profitable. Okay, so roads are 2 plus 2 is basically Phaeton. Or maybe something like tiny and something like this. So that's long wheelbase with this single exception, which is probably terrible. So then compact compact car. Okay, so let's design a new chassis. Let's design a new engine first and then make the chassis fit. Although no, I want to also have the medium sized engine fit in here. So we have some new stuff. So Superleggera is for ultralight sports cars. Very expensive. So there's a backbone. Also expensive to manufacture and to design. 
ladder frame is what we know. The perimeter is lighter and safer and less strong. That probably um, equals themselves out. And it's a bit more difficult to manufacture. So I think lightness isn't bad. We could go front wheel, front engine, front wheel drive. So we have all wheel drive, which of course does make sense. We have front mid engine rear wheel drive, which has a bit better stats, but is more expensive to design. Yeah, rear engine front wheel drive is useless. Rear engine rear wheel drive is more expensive to manufacture and not that durable. Handling, drivability, performance, all things that don't matter for front engine, uh, for compact cars and um, micro cars. At the same time, it's sort of radical, so let's go with what we know. And we want to keep things simple and cheap. So again, they get live axles. So how long shall it be? 1.9 meter compact car. It's also pretty narrow. Probably don't have to put much emphasis. Well, they must have like safety to an extent, and it's not that expensive. So does the engine fit? And that's the, it, this fits. So something like this and okay. So that's, that's, I think fine. Here we see what we need. So Kong, yeah, compact car is great. So what do they what do they want? Dependability, a bit of handling and a bit of safety. And this is dirt cheap. This is dirt cheap. So we can actually also go for dependability a little bit. No, this one durability. Getting manufacturing requirements, but it doesn't matter. So they want it doesn't. Yeah, they, it's it's simply uh, cheap. So some comfort, some performance. Not going to have a certain design focus. That's not worth it. And let's do it in six months. And for seventy-five dollars, uh, that's certainly uh, affordable. And the other engine fits and the our new engine is going to be smaller anyway. And let's check the difference to the ladder frame. So ladder frame would have more strength and a bit more performance. Cost the same. So that's simply for the for the novelty factor we're using a parameter frame for the um compact car platform. Some more comfort doesn't hurt. Performance isn't that important. How much of this would go away if I make the thing a bit wider? Okay, that's very easy. So it gets a bit wider. So I think it's only the engine length that need adjusting. And yeah, the 1.9 meter wheelbase is I think useful. Maybe 1.9. No doesn't make a difference. So some engine bay. $76, so that's very cheap. So it's our chassis for nine meters and it's our first parameter frame. So engine is going to be interesting. So Hang on, one thing. Have I stopped production of the seventh Phaeton? No, I haven't. And I can. So the oldest one that we have now is the pickup, but um, that doesn't really matter. So we can retire the 240L2 platform. 
we can dis retire the two speed from before the war. Finally. And we can retire the 700cc two cylinder. One thing I'm curious about whether this isn't a good foundation for our microcar engine because they love fuel economy. Uh, that was a mistake because now these are all over the place. And I need them where I'm used to them. So compact car, short chassis, and let's assume it's the non-synchronous gearbox, it doesn't matter. 14.5, so we still get this penalty. Does, I think this is torque dependent. Yeah, we're having it all the time. So, the, so this is, looks too small, so I'm having a bit more displacement, one, one liter, two cylinder, it fits, same penalty. Ah, if we have a lower aero, then we had a lower penalty, but it's still pretty, pretty uh, hefty. So 15.8. So it doesn't look like that this works. It could go overhead valve, make it more powerful. Doesn't really change a thing. So maybe not. So maybe it's more of a f smaller four cylinder. So let's go for less. So 900 cc. On the 1.9 chassis and with just for example the other gearbox, we're getting the same problem. 14.2, although this is the best thing I've seen so far. What we can do though is increase the revolutions. 13.6. How can I get rid of this penalty? If I so, what happens if I simply stuff the 18 HP engine in there? It doesn't fit, but it doesn't matter for the estimation. It probably doesn't. So we are at 12.5 at best. So 12.5. How about the Smaller engine. Twelve point eight. Unless I get a body with huge drag. Okay, so twelve point eight if I make it smaller. Thirteen point one. Smaller engine gets more fuel consumption. If I'm not mistaken, they are always very conservative with weight. So if I use microcar, then the figures look better. Eleven point four. If I make it larger, I'm still getting the penalty. When does this penalty go away? I'm still 
liking my two cylinder engine. No, if you're getting terrible fuel consumption figures one way or another, maybe more displacement. That's 13.7. Thirteen point five. So it doesn't like my four cylinders. Uh, it doesn't like my two cylinders, which is a pity because I like them. So here I am, eleven point seven. Eleven point seven with the one liter. What was the micro, uh, the smaller engine that we have? 11.2. Yeah, so the larger engine gives better fuel economy. How do the cars actually look like? So what's the bodies in terms of effective aero drag? So th this sort of coupe body that we haven't used, or this? This one has 4, 0 0 0.48, 0 0.46, 0.5, 0.42. I think we are too fancy. We are not fancy enough for those. 0.42, but this still has 0.48, so that's what we should aim for. Yeah, so that's, and I think I, I kind of like these. That's more the sedan type. So four four five eight one four eight three six two. And then probably the 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 micron. Although it's probably a bit too small, so Okay, what to do in terms of engine? So I don't want... To, so here I'm overriding what makes sense in terms of gameplay. Because that doesn't make sense in terms of realism. That the larger engine gets a better fuel economy. It's not that pronounced for those cars. So, four-cylinder... Maybe I'm thinking wrong. Maybe this is too large. Maybe just make it much more, much smaller. How about a... Six hundred CC. Let's still get some, some power and some torque. Thirteen point one, and that's what I'm centric. Two cylinders, six hundred cc. Twelve point eight. There we go. That's the thinking. We simply need to get sort of under the curve, entirely under the curve. So something like so 12.8 and that's reliable for all body types. So here we are so much below the curve it doesn't matter how inefficient things are. How about a little bit more displacement? So something like This already jumps up pretty high in terms... We can make it very, very fuel econo economical. 12.6. It's 
still 7 horsepower. Still 12.6 and cheaper. I think this is the thinking that makes more sense. So we're not getting more torque, not much. What's the extra fuel economy costs? So if I put it here, 6.2. It'll keep cost 93. 13.7 13.2 that's that's pretty massive here 12.6 so this was 12.6 11.8 with 400 cc so that works It's seven horsepower. So eleven point eight is here. Eleven point nine, so that that doesn't change the torque doesn't change things that much. Eleven point nine. So this is a sweet spot. I can focus a bit on performance here, but this already makes things more expensive and doesn't change a thing. So dependability, I think, is where it, where it should be. So fuel economy, 12, yeah, this, this has a massive impact. So then this is worth doing. So 11.9. 11.8, 7 horsepower, and 27 torque is 11.8, 8, 8 horsepower, 11.9. How does what the compact car look like? It's always 11.9 because we're so far below the curve. So this, I think, is then it. It will fit anywhere, anywhere. We could go for a little bit more quality in things. A bit more technology. Some more manufacturing that does only manufacturing only does smoothness, that doesn't matter. Material quality doesn't do anything. And the component only does quality too here. Where I think the technology is a bit fuel economic fuel economy, but it doesn't really do much. And it kills reliability to an extent. So eleven point eight. So that's that's okay. So here we are a bit more technologically inclined, and we pay a lot for extra fuel economy. Eight horsepower, twenty-seven millimeters of torque. Eleven point eight fuel economy, which is good in absolute terms. Can we go for a little more reliability? Yes, fifty reliability is great. So then the engine is a bit expensive, but it doesn't matter. I think six months is good. So that was a bit of, bit of a piece of work. And keeping it a flat hat, because we, yeah, wouldn't do our fanciest thing in a econo in a e engine that's destined for an economy car. And we need a new gearbox. What I'm tempted to do here for our next revamps to d develop a four speed. So that I'm going to use the, th the three speed non synchronous from 1924 in our economy car. And what I'm going to develop now is the four speed variant of that. And this gets uh, synchro mesh. So that's the Lux thing that doesn't go into our economy car. That will go into the next uh, larger cars. We can't really calibrate things, but I suppose let's just ask where well, we can actually, because we know the components, they won't change. So for the full size sedan, large platform, large engine, 74, mm, 72, 61 to 
72. I don't know what body we are using. 63 to 74. So that's better. So this is pretty short. 60 seat 74. Can I get to 75 somewhere? So this already drops. 75, 76. Yeah, so that's better. So they really want short gearing. Alright, so that's our new Lux gearbox. And we can take our sweet time with it. Because we're not going to um, put it into our econ our compact car. Alright, so four speed manual reverse gear. Finished at some point. The only thing that matters is we're going to get our design skills. So did we put... Yeah, so the new 18 Phaeton is in production. And we can retire the engine. The old... Seven hundred CC, and the new one is even smaller. So we did put it on sale. Yes, the old one is still on sale. We have still a couple left, so I can make less here because we will get some missed sales from the other. What does the press say, by the way? So there is the there's a trendy Australis 18 Phaeton. On paper, it does everything what it uh, should be doing, and it's an impressive 18 horsepower. And the the performance number are equally impressive for a Phaeton. They love the torque. They love the handling. It's no frills uh, in the interior. Plenty of space. Above average quality. Very dependable and very fuel economical. That's this weird sweet spot that we seem to have with this engine and it's not the best on the market in terms of safety, but otherwise it seems to be awesome. So then let it sell. No missed sales, but of course, um, oh, the existing seven hardly sells. That's good. So we leave it at that. And otherwise, um, we have 1,600 of this one. So we can, if if we can, we can make it cheaper if we want. And if this works, yeah, unit costs are very low. We don't have the price gouging yet. And we we'll simply make do the clearance sales for that one. Rock bottom price. So next month we're getting Sydney. We don't really need it, do we? At least we have the reserves for the for the future. Should things pick up again? Yeah, so we can adjust things. So 800 pickups. Things are calming down probably from the from the boom. Um, 1,115 sedans. Nine hundred less eight hundred sedan LX. Eight hundred fifteen touring. Seven hundred seventeen touring. Nine hundred eighteen sedan. One thousand nine hundred sixteen grand coupe. Seven hundred sixteen touring. I have no idea. I'm not going to lazy to calculate. And one thousand seven hundred phaetons. 
So one month till we get the Sydney upgrade, which we don't need. But you never know. Factory upgrade complete. Okay. So the old Phaeton will be gone next round. New one doesn't actually sell that well, so one... No, it's, it's, it's fine. We get, we're going to get some, some sales soon. So 1,015 sedan. So we need to calm down a bit. LX is good. 100 less touring, 15 tourings. Seventeen touring has dropped, so apparently there's something happening in the touring market. Five hundred fifty. Eight hundred eighteen sedan. One thousand six hundred sixteen grand coupe. A new platform in four. Okay, benefits, yep. What's the pension fund doing? Yep, growing. Cool. Okay, so the old Phaeton is gone. I okay. can. I already had stopped production, so I can. Do I have to remove it manually now. No, does it? Okay, this seems to work automatically. Cool. So the new Phaeton doesn't sell that well, all that well. So I make it one cheaper and cut production to one two. But I'm. Here's something I'm a bit uh, I'm a bit surprised about. Pickup is fine, sedan is fine, LX is fine, touring is fine. So we have built some inventory, so this has to go. So new chassis in three. So 17 Touring, 650. Rest is good. Ah, Phaeton, okay, so Phaeton sales are back where they should be, 1,700. eighteens. Seven hundred seventeens. Touring is good. So the NLX is good. Make four million cash flow. Because all the competitors stopped competing against stuff we actually sell. New contracts, Brisbane Taxi Service. Adelaide commercial fleet, so that's two. Oh, Phaeton sales dropped. That looks like competition. So pick up 750. Uh, 915 sedans. Alex is good. Touring is good. 17 Touring also dropped. That's probably also competition. So someone w woke up apparently. 550 17s. Is that all market? 
market effects. So Phaeton. A lot less. Ah, Hopesy has now an, a new Phaeton. Although it's pretty expensive. And worse than ours. So I'm not sure what the deal is here. Hopesy has a Touring. But that's not new. And the sedan isn't new either. So next month we're going to have a compact car platform. So pickups, I think the pickup is getting a bit long in the tooth, but that's then the next one. So 500 pickups. So we now have tons of production lines available in both factories. Um, 815 sedan, that's maybe also getting a bit stale. Seven hundred fifty. Sedan so LX six hundred ninety-three. Fifteen touring six hundred. I'm getting my new Melbourne factory next time around. Maybe we can consolidate everything in Melbourne. Um, where was I? Fifteen touring. Five hundred fifty. Seventeen touring four hundred fifty. That's probably aging. Full size sedan is good. Grand coupe one three. And Phaeton, yeah, let's uh, reduce these reserves. So have they started selling? Uh, and Apeson also. Apeson beginner. It's an old car. It suddenly appears. Okay, Burnt Oil goes all in on Phaeton production in Adelaide. Uh, Phaeton sales in Adelaide, so that's that's odd. Okay. So our, our cash flow is down to uh, 2 million. So we have a bit of overcapacity now. But at the same time, we're, we might then just be able to consolidate everything into one factory. And we might just do that in the next episode. See you then.